So anyway, my mom and um, friends and the Anos Kansas, whatever, all together, would have some prayer at the airport, or whatever, the hour, getting together to talk. My mom was like, gosh, you know, should I go? Because my mom's very impressed with all, with the fact I've lost nearly 70 pounds and whatnot. And I, you know, I still have people thinking that I'm in my late 20s or early 30s as opposed to my mid 40s, or, you know, early 40s, whatever. And she goes, Doris, you know, yeah, she's still a young girl. And my mom, in comparison to her at 66 or whatever, the others, you know, she was talking to And that was cancer. She goes, she goes, She's hardly a young girl. She's a middle-aged woman. Okay? But I fight against that. But I cannot be labeled a middle-aged woman. You know? I look to the stars. I look to Jennifer Lopez and Haley Berry. And, you know, they're not being called middle-aged women. They're being called hot as fucking shit. You know? Anyway. Now I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down because it's easier. I'm standing up and far away. I don't know if my mom might come up and hear me. It's a bad storm outside. I just want to see. You want to see the bad storm? <laughs> Who would, you know, touch me all the time and not, not 
not you know totally totally like you know in a vulgar way but but you know what I mean I know exactly what I want to need and the thing is even if I can't have love and I'm, the reason I can't have love is not because I'm not lovable it's not because even don't not because some guy couldn't fall in love with me it's because I am broken and damaged I can't given that way. I will never trust another living soul, not even my own mother, who unfortunately, sadly, has repeatedly proven to be untrustworthy. And I forgive her for that because I know it's because of her sickness and she's manipulated and controlled and fearful, but still she's proved to be untrustworthy. I can make my mom promise not to say something and Miriam will get it out of my mom and I'll say, Mom, why'd you tell me? Well, she tricked me, you know? I have a deep-rooted sexual hunger in me that has never been satisfied. And that's a scary fucking thing, because even Donald, this was back before I was with Donald, you know, even back when one of my one-night stands once said, you know, to me, you don't need porn, a slight breeze will turn you on. Now think about it. I was that way back before I even met Donald. He put in his stupid analysis of lard tape, um, you know, you know, he talks about how I'm analytical and anal and all this writing and thinking is, is concretized or concrete, you know, blah, 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 whatever, by the immediacy of sexuality. And he was always betrayed the way to get through Laura, to Laura, to go right for a crop, through a crotch. And, and you know, I know that's a sad thing, you know, because, you know, it's not that easy to, you know, take advantage of you and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if that was all the case before, Donald's a total fucking joke for year after year after year after year after year. I mean, like I told, like about those, those, you know, the ones who just want to put it in you, selfish, whatever, at least they love sex. They might, they're, they're terrible, and they suck it, and they're selfish, but at least, I mean, I mean, Donald was, he, he, I live in fear that Donald's gonna decide to come and, you know, kill me one one day, someday, you know. I have enemies and they call, they, you know, I have enemies who could tell Donald where I am. You know, they could. They did it in L.A. What's to stop them now? Fucking prick. Um. Oh yeah, I have a deep, pretty sexual hunger in me. But at this point, I'm all messed up. And what that means is I would need a guy who is just so unbelievably sexual and into sex and transcending. Cause I want to just connect with somebody in an animalistic way. Um, he would have to just, with his own darkness and vulgarness or whatever, you know, he'd have to ease my fears and turn me into the animal that I want to be, you know. I've never had that. Never in my life. Because Donald was a joke. And the nice, beautiful, one of the nicest people on the planet, I'm still very good friends with him. Musician, got, you know, he wasn't into sex that way that I need and it can crave, you know. It was... Okay, it's Sunday, it's time to have sex. It wasn't come up behind me while I'm washing the dishes and, you know, talk dirty in my ear and nibble on my ear and neck and, you know, and all that. And, and you know, if, if the mood or time is right, fuck me right there while I'm washing the dishes right from behind, you know. Um, he wasn't like that. I've never been with anyone like that. But it's what I want. Um, when it comes to me, that's not just what I want, it's what I need because I'm so messed up and dead inside and I know that if I can feel that the person's handsome and everything else on my body again, that would help me heal more than, but it had would have to be a connection. It would have to be somebody I trusted. It would have to be someone that 
hopefully wasn't lying to me and that we would be in monogamous and that he wasn't fucking everything in, in an insight plus me, you know, like Charlie Sheen does, you know. Um, you know, he's not, he was with a different woman in the morning and night, you know what I mean? It would have to be something other than that, right? And I, it could only be a certain kind of guy. And he'd have to have the imagination and the intellect to pull it off. You can't fake what I want. Just like a guy who's not into B and S, B and D, whatever, is not going to be able to fake it. It has to be from the head, from the mind. You know. Um, And that's what I want, denying that, but I was in such a sexually frustrating, stifling relationship for so long, and I couldn't initiate it. <sighs> that I fear what I would turn into should I ever meet that guy who turns me on both physically and mentally and who is into sex and whatever. I meet that guy and he, you know, I get excited at the drop of a hat. Um, and the following is going to be a um, spoiler for a movie called A Dangerous Method. So if you haven't seen that movie, if you want to see that movie, then just shut this video off right now. Um, Dangerous Method. I found out at the end of the movie, it's a true story, and it does tie into what I'm talking about, because she, um, in a true story about Jung and Freud and their, their, um, rivalry and whatever, they're both famous psychiatrists, if you don't know that, you know, they were, and in the beginning of this movie, Kira Knightley's character is completely mad. I mean, she's the kind of mad that, that I've thankfully never been, but I've seen my mother become on more than one occasion, okay? But I say, um, and the thing is, she's totally, totally mad, insane, but it's a true story, and she doesn't stay that way, and Young, Dr. Young, you know, he, he has talking therapy, and he just talks to her, and talks to her, but it turns out, I mean, one of the things she says, is she belongs in that place, and I've always felt that way, you know, I'd, I belong, like, my song, Sweet Release, you know, shoot me up with some kind of drug, it's the only way to save me, keep me under lock and key, just please don't hate me, because everything that I do is only an effort to escape the hold of a world so cold, and everything I try to attain is my attempt to end the pain, I feel like I'm inside a tomb, I try to breathe, but there's no room for me, I, um, she, he finally got it out of her that, she was just felt like she should be locked up in there because she was actually still a virgin, but she her father had engaged in I guess he used to make her strip naked and smack her, smack her, smack her, and she liked it. And now whenever she hears anything being smacked, she would get super wet and have to go home and touch herself. Okay, and she finally admitted it to the doctor because it was deep inside her, and she was like, I'm. I'm, I'm vile, I'm this, I'm that, I belong locked up here, I can't be in, you know, in good, normal, everyday society because I get turned out of the drop of a hat, okay? It takes nothing to turn me out. I mean, fortunately, we women can hide, you know, but what I'm trying to say is she was mad, but she, and in the end, this is very important, she gets better, and she even becomes a psychiatrist herself and whatnot. She never believed that much was in there, so that she just have to be in there forever because she can't be, you know, let out of the cage, so to speak, in public society. And um, the thing is, even though she's better, and you know, and now is okay, you think she's still not crazy? Of course she's still crazy, she's just simply learned how to control it. She learned how to accept her vileness and still remain alive. You know what I mean? She's still crazy. She winds up seducing the doctor who wants to just be in his boring marriage or whatever. And, and she, she gets him to admit his 
that he was lusting after her and he winds up smacking her in the ass and thinking whatever, you know, but, um, then he, he, he can't deal with it because he's cheating on his wife. He wants to be the good person. He's conflicted, conflicted, conflicted. And she winds up, you know, stabbing him in the face because he's going to leave her. So, and this is after she's already, quote unquote, better, you know, well able to mingle with regular society, okay? Not screaming in the mud in the water, whatever. So, I never, you understand? I control my insanity. It's always there, and I can't be with some normal guy. I have to be with a guy who has dark impulses, feels darkness in him as strongly as I always have. As far back as I can remember. Um, but it has to be tempered by love. Don's cuckoo, don't. But Donald wasn't into sex at all. He was on a million different psych meds, experimenting with them all the time, you know. Um, it has to be tempered by love and acceptance, you know. It can't just be somebody who, I don't want orgies and all of that. I want a one-on-one -on -one deep connection that, you know, satisfies my lifelong sexual ache, hunger, desire, whatever. Now I'm 44. I mean, I've never experienced what I ache for. And you think I don't go around thinking about that all the time? But I am a broken, damaged creature, admittedly so. Um, I know what I want. I just don't know if what I want. I mean, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't. I and a guy would want me, see? It has to be a certain type of thing. And like I said, I've been dabbling now in these free websites or whatever, um, dating websites. You know, I have a bad tendency to just blab everything. I really just want a guy who, who knows all about this YouTube shit, who knows all this and still wants. Like I said, even if I, you know, I could never have fame that I wanted, but I refuse to be negated. I refuse to just be this thing that Marion and Donald and Hope and Bob. wanted me to be refused. I did, I'd have a quarter of a million, I mean, I became famous out on the internet, and it was whatever, I have a quarter of a million hits between my three YouTube channels. A quarter of a million hits, almost. 170-something on this channel, close to 80 on Alicia Creature, and like 7 on Alicia Rowe, and that's almost a quarter of a million hits. That's a lot. I'm not some nobody, and other people out there that know about me. Hypothetically, I can, my mom has unlimited phone, I can, when she's not around, I, she leaves me a phone, I can use the phone, I could, you know, talk to a hot guy who might be hot for me, who knows all about my internet shit, you know, so there's no, no pretending, you know, like I have to do with the internet, with the dating website guys, you know, just so I can even get a date and so they don't just run away screaming from me before I even get a chance to have a date with them, you know. I need to have a fucking date. I need to just, just be hugged again. You know, fuck sex. I need to be touched again. It's not about pleasure. It's about feeling alive. It's about feeling alive. Feeling alive. In a dangerous mess, you know, she had to come to terms with the stuff inside of her that scared her that she didn't like. You know, and part of that was her intense sexuality, you know. All it took was to hear somebody, the guy, the doctor, one point was beating her coat with a stick. This is when he didn't know anything about her very much. Just that she was crazy, insane. And and she later told him, you know, when you were beating my coat that had fallen on the ground, you know, she gets so wet she can't even, you know, stand it.
that was a decent movie, you know, it's a true story, and it's about, you know, you can try to suppress down and deny anything you want about yourself that you hate about yourself, but it's still going to be in there, baby. It's never going to go away, as I've been fond of saying for quite some time now, long before, and if you guys knew me, you can, you cannot ever escape yourself. Scratch your skin until it bleeds. Run half naked through the leaves, but you'll never be believed until it's too late. the fucking. And I can just give up completely, except for. Two little things. My fear of the unknown and death. And the fact that I'm very imaginative, creative, and sexual. And I want that. I want to share that with somebody. I want to step inside somebody who, sh who feels that same kind of hunger. And not just one of those guys that, believe me, I've met enough of them. You know, my little one night stands, place to go to the bars and just pretend to be dumb Alicia. Just um who just might stick it in you and you know, sure they might love sex, but they don't have the intellect and imagination to turn me the fuck on in the slightest. Donald had it. oh my god, he had it in droves. He had it over abundance, that imagination and that intellect and that darkness, but he was not sexual in the least. In the least. It was all about control with him. Never switched positions. Never made me feel good about myself. Climb on top of me and come on my stomach because I refused to ever go on birth control. Why should I anyway? Why should I get fatter and whatever and going birth control, you know, for, for what? Sex every month or, or even less often than that, I mean, boring fucking sex. Or if I don't stay wet enough, he, uh, I'm not attracted to him, I'm not excited by him. He's pounding and pounding and pounding into me, and I can't stay so wet. But I was supposed to stay wet by osmosis, apparently, because that was what would happen if I was excited by him. I know someone might flag this video, but hopefully, YouTube will do the right thing. And you know, review it and see that it should just be, you know, restricted, you know, 18 and over, not that it should be, you know, that I should receive a strike for it, you know, but I found from experience that YouTube doesn't even look at the videos and the issue of strike, you know, um, but anyway, that's the, that's the gist of the matter. Some people want, most people, a lot of people, most, most men, you know, most men want, so, I mean, Donald's the worst person I could ever go to so fucking poorly and imagined, and I thought that would carry over to the background, but I was wrong. Um, most people want that, but more men and women, but not but most people don't need it. I mean, need that fucking just... connection and... I want... Oh, the, my best analogy I'll with this. My best. Trent Reznor closer. Help me become somebody else.
Fred Reznor and Nine Inch Nails is the print that you see, like, I do father songs that have themes, you know, like Breakfast Club, Don't You Forget About Me, We Stand Above Me, Look My Way Never Left Me, um, who have the themes of, of, you know, what's the theme of my video, so I just put that song instead of coming up with some stupid video title. Help me become somebody else. My whole existence is flawed. You can help me closer to God. Oh my That's what I want. That's what I want in a guy. Finding that is almost like finding a needle in a haystack. Because it has to be a guy. It has to be tempered by love and accept complete acceptance of me and all my flaws and my insecurity and my vulnerability and my neediness and all that. And you have to be able to ease my fears and turn me into that sexual animal that you and I both want me to be able to be.